it's just in case. Yeah, so um, yeah, so the plan for today is to talk about the uh, change point model. And we know that it is actually uh, related to a uh, class, I mean, it is related to an exam question that we had. Uh, but this time I gave you a data set and also uh, tried to ask, I mean, ask you to code the, it is a Gibbs sampler, I think and uh, code it up in Python and see if you are able to um, make the inference and the estimation process working. Um, so we can do so in the usual way that we do, um, whoever feels comfortable to join, uh, to, oh, Elliot is joining, whoever feels comfortable to, um, to share the screen and show your work, um, feel free to do it. And then we're just gonna go along with that and then ask questions along the way. Hi, Elliot, we just get started. Mm -hmm. Anyone wants to um, unmute? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyone wants to um, share the work and whoever, yeah, everybody else, I guess, including me, will just ask questions. Like, stop anytime, pause uh, to ask questions if you have any. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. I've won already last time, though, so I don't want to like. Get in anyone's way there. Yeah, uh, Ted is joining as well. So, um, yeah, Herrick or Dahlia or Ted or Elliot, who wants to um, get started? Even if you might not have it working, we can still learn from from the um, from the things you have tried, and then um, I'll, I mean, others will be able to contribute and make comments about about it. Mm -hmm. Anyone? Okay. All right. Um, let's pull this up. So, um, I, in my version that I have, just the switch point uh, mm -hmm. book. I did something slightly different than the PDF write-up mm -hmm. um, listed, and I essentially found this alternate switch point model um, where you still have two lambdas for one for each period that you're that you're thinking about, mm -hmm. um, and then you consider sort of a, a tau, which will be like the day or like the time period where things change mm -hmm. um, to just be sort of um, like a discrete uh, uniform distribution so it could just be any day you're not like you're not focusing on some region in particular um, and then using the um, pi MC package mm. uh, you can do um, you can put that together um, into a uh, into a model where you where you pull together those three different things, mm -hmm. um, and I think um, it ends up being you know fairly fairly nice, um, just because um, of the way where uh, of like sort of some of the visualizations you can get. I see. Um, so especially at the bottom, you can kind of see that what that switch looks like and how it sort of is reflected um in the data um and how yeah, really quick Ali, are you sharing your screen or are you just oh sorry i didn't I, yeah, yeah. But, but we were following i mean your description but i guess based on your words yeah. you were probably talking about your screen and i don't see any uh, uh, yeah. you should be able to share where's the search screen button again um what is this Um, oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. You're talking about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, here you just have this um, start out with just, um, in this case, two lambdas that are um, the version, like the version I read, just like, okay, two lambdas that ha are distributed um, exponentially in this case, and mm -hmm. that I'm going to take this tau to be. Uh, discrete uniform on zero to like the highest value you've seen in your data. 
um, and then um, bring bring this together um, into this. Uh, the the lambda here is more so about um, the way Pi MC draws stuff, uh, mm -hmm. pulls things together, mm -hmm. but it's mostly just um, saying like lambda one is going to be everything less than tau, and lambda two is going to be everything above it. Yeah. Um, and then it has built in sort of um, MCMC. So just sort of run that, um, in this case, 10,000 times or 40,000 times with a, a 10,000, um, the first 10,000 being sort of like the burn in period. Um, these are just graphing functions. So you can sort of see um, that we get density for the first, um, the first one being around, you know, eight, nine. Um, and the next one being more like 16, 17. Yeah. And then you can also see for your, for your tau, in this case, only two show up at mm -hmm. 115 and 116 mm -hmm. um, in index days. And then just setting up for another graph, um, this one at the bottom, you can have like an uh, I've overlaid, obviously just sort of fixed, but um, lambda one and then jumping up to lambda two. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. at that, at that most probable tau. So in this case, like 116 or what? Yeah, 116. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, it, it, if you just look at looking at the data, um, there certainly does seem to be like a bump up in um, the number of hurricanes around that period. So it seems to sort of match up. Yeah, good point. So uh, if I understand it correctly, I think Elliot is using the uh, PyM3 package to implement the model, yeah. uh, which is uh, totally fine. And what I wanted to discuss, I guess, because um, Elliot, I guess you were talking about the tau. Yeah. So can we go up to tau? So the particular write-up, I mean, the PDF that I uh, shared, and I think it's, like I said, it's uh, actually one of the exam questions from 347. I think the tau here being defined uh, by Elliot is probably the same thing as I was talking about with M. Is that right? So I use M, if you remember, um, to denote the, the time, right? Like the particular, I guess, a day that, that we have uh, this change. So, um, so, and I think in the model that I shared, um, we were also using a discrete, uh, discrete uniform, right, for, uh, for, a, uh, for M. So mm -hmm. I guess the model, I mean, the two models are probably very um, similar to each other. And uh, uh, I guess, except, so anybody remembers in the PDF write-up, do we give uh, Lambda a exponential distribution or something else? I said yes. Just speak up. Mm -hmm. we, gave, we gave it a gamma, but I mean, I guess that's the same thing. So, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. a exponential is a gamma. So, I, like, I think all of the conjugacy we had is identical in here. Yeah. And okay. if if this is like one of the conjugate models recognized by Pi MC, it would make sense they like specify it in a particular way. I yeah. Think. Right. And then the observations themselves uh, is being uh, put as a Poisson. So I think that was also um, the same as what we what we had. Okay. So. All right, so let's maybe, uh, like, uh, Ellie, can you go down? I just want to, like, maybe try to memorize some of the results and then maybe, um, yeah, like you're saying, yeah, lambda by doing this is around eight and nine, lambda one, right? And the other one is around 17, 16, right? And then tau in days is 115, um, yeah, 115, 116. So, um, yeah, and then also this final thing, yes. So that's good. So that's a good thing. I mean, I'm trying to memorize what they are. So um, maybe we can uh, move to another person's uh, work, especially if you have done it um, using your own MCMC, like Gibb sampler that you wrote mm -hmm. uh, by yourself. And I wonder if we're gonna get something that is similar. Uh, I mean, in short, if you use uh, PyMC3, well, um, if yeah, I, I'm sure like Elliot did it correctly, so so we should get something hopefully very similar to this result. Um, but what Elliot had done, um, did you upload it to to the GitHub? Yeah, it's on there. Right, right. So um, everybody else, if you want to check out how to do this uh, using PyM3, then uh, this will be a good uh, place to to check it out. And I think um, yeah, for the remaining time, we can talk about maybe another person's work um, to see if we are able to. 
uh, get something closed. Or if you have run into any uh, computation issues that I mentioned in the PDF write up, um, feel free to let us know. Thank I you. I will say just the one difference is in this case, the way IMC is implemented, it's not um, the, you're not Gibbs sampling quite the same way. Yeah. Um, so it's more metropolis tasting. So that's maybe we the only difference that we see. Yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah. So good catch. So right. So pi MC3 uh, probably is not might not be using exactly what we're going to code if we code it by ourselves. So uh, results wise might not be um, exactly the same. But I still I still think I mean, at the end of the day, all of them are MCMC. We're trying to um, I mean, approximate the true posterior like just three different algorithms. Um, so I mean, in the once we have run things uh, long enough, we should converge. I mean, the results should converge to some degree. But but let's find out. So um, anybody has uh, has has done it using um, Python or writing the Gibbs yourself, and then we can look at what you have, and then maybe compare that to what Elliot had done using PyMC3. I can go if no one uh, else wants to. Okay, I, I'm, I'm totally fine. Anybody, um, yeah, maybe we can start with ISACs and then we just ask questions along the way. I mean, I probably will have questions and then uh, everybody else feel free to, to jump in. So mine, uh, let me share screen, sorry. Yeah. Hopefully everyone can see this. Yeah. All right. Uh, so it's the like setup. Um, I read did the reformatting so it's in um, year to count. And then the other thing too, it said on the write up we should do storms. So I guess we could filter on hurricane. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I see. But this one is, and I don't know how much things change if we do hurricanes instead of um, storms. But the like sampler helper functions. So uh, these are just your uh, posterior gamma draws um, mm -hmm. as outlined. Um, so those are just following the PDF right up, right? The ones? Yeah, well, it's just the right. in, in the exam, but yeah. OK, sounds good. Um, and then uh, for drawing M, uh, this step here is kind of, I guess I probably could have broken up a little bit more. That's, this is the, um, transform for, I forget whether it's a conditioning or stability issue. Mm -hmm. Um, so that gives you the, like, log of the numerator of your fraction and mm -hmm. then convert it to exponent. And mm -hmm. then also the sum of all of those is the denominator, your probability yeah. fraction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's pretty much where you draw mm -hmm. uh, M and then I did it just as a multinomial draw. So you have to like figure out which index is M. Yeah. That's, so probably, that's yeah. kind of a clunky way to do it. I'm sure there's something much cleaner. Um, return the integer to that. And then you get to uh, here, this just kind of pieces those all together. Doesn't mm -hmm. uh, sequentially like a Gibbs sampler. Uh, so when I ran mine, mm -hmm. Mine waffled between two change points mm. around 80 and 120. I don't know if this is like when I went and looked at the actual plot, it seemed reasonable. Mm. Um, but I also think it like probably should have converged to one value too. Um, mm. So like actually 115, 116, that index and 80 were the two um, popular Mm -hmm. samples and they each like have a corresponding lambda too mm -hmm. so that's why the lambdas are bimodal um but in plotting and this also could have been a product of like how i folded up the data uh to do like tropical storms and hurricanes um but uh here's the um storms over time mm -hmm. um and there's change point like the first one it waffled on and the second one um, it waffled on. I think there's like a, you can kind of see there's a reasonable argument that like things have changed at both of these. Um, and in particular, like if you split the, if you split this data and then take the density of annual counts, mm -hmm. um, 
at each split, like it's a pretty clearly different distribution. So that's why I was uh, a little bit like it didn't bother me by the end as much that it didn't converge to the same value. Um, I know Elliot had the 115, 116 um, split, which was the 1966 before and after. So I think it agreed with his there. Yeah. Um, point. So can we go up? I, I would just start because I have some questions, but everybody else feel free to uh, jump in. Can we go up a little bit more? I was curious. Uh, yeah, sorry. Just about the Lambda, the L1 and L2. So yeah, so yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was, so it was mm -hmm. um, bimodal. Like, I think the best way to put it is like this would be one of the modes for lambda one mm -hmm. or lambda two. Sorry, mm -hmm. and this would be the other mode for like. There's if there's two change points, then there have to be two pairs of lambdas. Um, right, right. Like if it's saying two change points are pretty plausible. Um, mm -hmm. then I guess like you couldn't keep the, a single pair of lambdas and like preserve that. Oh yeah. That's point. Cool. Yeah. That's why I guess you're right. That, um, right. So up there about the plot. Yeah. Here about the lambda. So, like this back, this subsection of lambda twos, um, would probably correspond to the lambdas if this mm -hmm. were the change point. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, well, the if will be about the, the other one were the change point, this would be the lambda two. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like kind of balancing both both of those things. And again, I'm not entirely sure why I got like it converged kind of to two places. Mm -hmm. um, but also the fact that like I think there's a credible case that um, like there are right, right, yeah. If you look at the change. Date, right? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. How long did you run the chain? Uh, I went for uh, 100,000, yeah. burnt in 50, thin 100. I also started it. I don't know if this matters. I started it. Um, where did I? Maybe it's. Oh, I started it with at 100. So I kind of started it like right in the middle, I guess. And maybe that's why it did waffled on. I wonder if I try like 115. Yeah, well, that's sort of cheating, but <laughs> no, go ahead. Yeah. It, it takes a little while to run. Yeah, I so. know it's going to take like five minutes uh, to run, right? But you can let us know if you see anything, uh, anything else. But but like you said, I mean, you have run it for, for a large number of iterations. And, but again, once we look at the data um, itself, it, it, is, it is reasonable to see two change points. Uh, and and maybe I like folded the data in a different way than. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So you're saying that you count because you have to uh, like wrangle the data in the way that you get the counts of each year, right? So I did the number of unique storms in that year because the, the the data in actually here I'll stop this real quick in long format it's. Like each storm is tracked mm -hmm. um, at different chunks throughout the day. That's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's just like um, like this is all should count as one storm for eighteen fifty one. I see. I see. Oh. Um, I see what you mean. So then I like grouped it on year. Mm -hmm. Took the number of unique storm IDs within that year. I see. Yeah. Elliot, do you have a quick comment there based on how? Yeah, it should be the same. We should we, we should be the same. Oh, it is the same. Okay, okay, yeah. Well, that's good to know. So it's probably um, probably something else. But but I'm not saying that like um, Isaac's code is wrong. We we probably I mean we have a lot to learn from this. And again, the two two ways to sample this, like Elliot was pointing out earlier, um, uh, Pi MT three is not. Ooh. That's not right. <laughs> IMC3 is not uh, doing uh, a Gibbs sampler as we are trying to do it here. And uh, most likely they do some kind of other uh, sampling techniques there. So maybe that's why. Um, but, but both, I mean, again, both methods are, I think, um, worth checking out. 
And um, if you have not figured out, like say all of the details um, for your own code, uh, definitely take a look at either way. And um, in, if you're writing your own Git sample, definitely check out uh, what Isaac has done for, for, for his work and then see if you're able to, uh, I mean, I'm actually uh, curious now. So maybe next time when we meet, um, each, of, each of you just like maybe just do a quick report back of what you find out. Like once you run your code, maybe starting with a different starting point and um, see, well, yeah, mostly about M, right? What about Lambda? Lambda one and Lambda two, you also, uh, Isaac, you also set initial values for them, right? Yeah, I chose mm -hmm. uh, Lambda one to be five and Lambda two to also be five. Okay, okay. Yeah, but again, I mean, initial values like what we talked about wouldn't matter that much. So so I doubt it is uh, It is what, what we saw, it is, yeah. I doubt that was what we saw by in terms of the different results. Uh, but again, those will be the things that we can play with um, each of us uh, to make sure that we uh, get it nailed down. Um, so next time when we meet, uh, I mean, next Wednesday, we can quickly uh, spend the five, first five or 10 minutes to go over your results and then uh, see what you have found. And then um, and then we can move on oh, well, to the next topic I've been having. <laughs> not got the time yet to, to do the uh, probe it, but I would do it by the end of tomorrow. So I will send it and then you can do the, I would do the our version and then you'll be able to uh, figure out the Python. So next week, I think we'll plan on uh, revisit the probe it. And, um, and then I think we only probably have one more. Uh, yeah, almost two more, almost two more methods, but um, uh, two more weeks, um, but I will plan to have um, a latent class type of model uh, give sampler exercise for us all. And um, yeah, most likely what I would do probably will just go back to, if you guys remember the, um, what was it? The, I think it was a case study. We're talking about like um, different, uh, like uh, multiple choice questions, right? Like we're seeing uh, like a cluster of high score and a cluster of like a mid range score. So we're saying that if they're, uh, does there exist two different groups, um, underlying latent groups there, whether one is just random guessing, the multiple choice, and then the other ones are knowledgeable groups. So I might, um, yeah, I will put together something around that with the same data set. And we have fit the, the model back then uh, with Jax in R. So you'll roughly get, yeah, you will know like what the, what the um, if you use R or Jax again, or even um, PyJax if you're able to do it. Uh, within Python, you can see if you're gonna get something similar. And um, but for next week, yes, let's do um, let's do the probe it. And um, if I couldn't figure out the probe it, then I will put together the latent and definitely will get something um, to work for us um, next week. Um, but but I think that will be that will be the plan. And then I mean the our class meeting, the last one will uh, I think will be the last day of class or faster. So I'm not sure, I mean, we'll see everybody's schedule, and, uh, but we at least have the next two weeks uh, planned for, for some kind of exercise and then reporting back to the group, okay? Questions, comments? Is everybody counting? Does everybody count the, the remaining weeks to, to end the semester? Yeah. yeah very challenging I am sure so we have I think three more weeks right ambassador I don't know about well Elliot you already graduated so so you probably don't worry or don't care um, um I said how many more weeks do you have uh, I, I think we're about the same about the same okay yeah you have final exams like uh, like actual exams to take for all of you or mostly just project I think it'll mostly be projects okay. yeah. um, but I think for some of my classes, it's still up in the air, so. That's true, yeah, challenging. Anybody else? Uh, Kelly, I guess you mostly, I mean, last week we discussed it and that's how we decided what we we're gonna move forward with this and kind of I guess mostly, mostly projects. Yeah, I'm just doing projects and um, my thesis and the, the econ department is trying to figure out how we can like virtually defend our theses. Yeah. Yeah. Like, do you do a presentation usually? I mean, if, if we meet I mean, the class or the, the department meets in person? 
Yeah, usually like it's a whole big like thing, like the econ theses writers like defend their thesis in front of like the whole department. Oh, and it's like a whole, yeah, it's like a whole thing. Yeah. Well, so I mean, we're going to have to do it over Zoom, I guess. Yeah, in theory you can do it in Zoom, um, but it would just be like a super long. Yeah. <laughs> days. I don't know how things will be done, but yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's hard too because I, oh, sorry, <laughs> I don't have access to Stata anymore. Um, right. I can, I'm just doing everything in R now. Oh, that's true. Let's see. But most of the stuff probably will be transferable anyway. Yeah, I'm like learning as I go. Because <laughs> the Stata, I guess you don't have license unless you're on campus, is that right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's true. But I definitely have heard about uh, colleagues, I mean, faculty members in econ department saying that, like, if you are able to, I think you can, what is it, like Citrix? Like you're yeah, it's on Citrix, but I, like, can't figure out how to use it because oh, okay. it's basically like a virtual, uh, like, what's that called? Like, it's like a virtual desktop, so it's like a desktop within a desktop. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how to upload any files or, like, download any files. Like, it's just kind of stuck on there. Yeah. 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 I'm just going to work it out in R, I think. Yeah. Yeah. When is your deadline to, to submit the thesis? Like, it's just very up in the air at the moment. Um, yeah. Nice We're idea. not really sure. Yeah. Yeah. Harry, what about you? Um, I have, I guess, for our data confidentiality, just the paper. Um, right. And then, um, yeah. And then um, with, um, I have like a test for like another class, but um, it shouldn't be too bad. I guess like now I'm keeping myself busy with school. So like, I guess when it ends, then I really have nothing else to do. I know. I was thinking, well, I, I still now I know when is weekday and when is weekend. But exactly. after it has to end, my, I don't know, like my whole life will just be every day the same. Exactly. And which day it is. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, but yeah. Are you thinking about going back at all or are you just gonna? No, I think I'll stay in the US. Um, and I think I'm still supposed to start in July. And so hopefully um, that doesn't change, but yeah. we'll see. Yeah. Challenging, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Elliot, are you mostly just busy helping everybody <laughs> getting ready for their classes? Yeah, I mean, I've just been helping out with the school where it's needed um a lot of like basic tasks and like little setup things for the most part um making sure like professors have phones that work and things like that um but you know it, it's okay it's something to do i guess yeah i mean i think a lot of times like people will feel the best if you're helping others so you're definitely definitely doing that all the time and that will be greatly appreciated are you is Carlton in week two or three now, two? Three. Um, it's, so normally it would be week three. Technically it's two because they canceled the first week. Yeah, of yeah. Third. yeah Professor Lloyd, he emailed me uh, doing your break, asking about, oh, how can I bring class online and all that? So I sort of knew that you had a later start. But you're saying that the quarter is also shorter. shorter. Yeah, they, they shortened it by a week. Um, yeah, because I think they wanted that extra week to be able to set things up yeah, um, and get everyone sort of working. I mean, I, I think it's working for the most part. There's a lot of, you know, I know every class is a little different, so mm -hmm. I think most of them are kind of working. Some of them are probably a little bit harder than others to, you know, mm -hmm. um, do over, over video, but you know, yeah. they're trying their best. I know all the props want to know do well you know and you know so good, good luck and ted are you still there yeah just can't see me yeah we, we never see you except for your <laughs> your hand or your headphone occasionally how's the campus uh i have no clue okay you just stay uh, indoors yeah, there's no need to go outside ever again, so I just chose not to. But, I mean, you still need to do grocery shopping. Uh, I did that like two weeks ago. I think I'm good for the next month. Wow. What do you stock up? Like, do you get like anything fresh at all? Everything is frozen. 
Uh, yeah, I just shoved everything in the freezer, and then usually at the beginning of the week, I'll like take out like a whole bunch of vegetables and then like let it not be disgusting. But yeah, like, do you and your roommate or a housemate like take turns cooking, or is whoever? I've been extremely lazy, so it's like he's doing the cooking and I do the cleaning. Oh, okay. That's a good easy bite. Yeah, I mean, that's what we do at home, uh, me and my husband. Like, I always clean the dishes and then he would do the cooking and then everybody's happy. Yeah, besides that, I don't know. There's no, nothing much to do except, like, I have, like, a final paper for a class and it's, like, more than double digits. Mm. And... I, I struggled really hard just to write like five pages or something. So this is going to be tough. I see. I see. Oh, is that how I feel about my thesis? <laughs> is that the writing, the, the literature class you're talking about? Yeah, the, it's oh. the literature class. Okay, okay. What's your topic? I don't know. I have to pick one out by tomorrow. Well, I thought you already wrote five pages. Oh, no, no. The, this were the five pages for the previous paper. That was just like okay. supposed to be like a warm up. I don't know. I couldn't really yeah. do that that well. It'll be fine. Well, don't forget we have a paper, I mean, a report for the intensive. <laughs> Hopefully that's not as bad as, as the other. Uh, yeah, I, I know what's happening in our class. Just I'm not quite sure how to go about for like something that's so open-ended. Mm -hmm. I understand. It is a, is it a Japanese and Chinese literature? Is that the course? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Is it like modern, modern literature? No, there's like a little bit of Confucius and then a little bit of oh modern. It's just like it's it's a whole bunch of random stuff. Ah, okay. All right, have fun. I'm sure it's funny, and it's your last semester, and you get NRO, right? It doesn't matter. <laughs> all right, you all take care. I will be in touch. I mean, by the end of tomorrow, either pro. Or late and I just need to get the time and sit down and do it and then um, and then don't forget to um, work out the, um, the change point model um, borrowing from whoever you want to learn from and then um, I just like to hear what the what the what the conclusion you will make and then I want to see how how things might be different from I mean clearly we saw some different results between Isaac and um, Elliot so just curious what you find out and then we can discuss them early next, um, at the beginning of the meeting next week, okay? All right, you all take care. Bye. Hey. Bye, thank you. Bye, thank you. have a good day. Take care, bye.